In this video, I'll discuss regular expressions. Regular expressions are a sequence of characters that are used to find a pattern. And they're used extensively in many different computer languages to find patterns in text. That includes validating user input, including things like email addresses, postal codes, and phone numbers to ensure that they're entered in the correct format. There can be many different regular expressions that will result in finding the same pattern. So there's more than one way to do the same thing. Regular expressions are built using meta characters. For wildcards, that includes symbols like the question mark, which means that we want to match zero or one of the previous element. The previous element, for example, might be the character to the left of the question mark where it appears within the regular expression. A star or asterisk symbol means that we want to match zero or more of the previous element where the plus sign would mean we want to match one or more of the previous element. A period means that we need to match a single character at that location. And this is where we really need to be careful because at the Linux command line itself, the question mark will match a single character at that location. But when you work with regular expressions, a period would do that instead. A hat sign, often called the caret symbol will match the beginning of a string, whereas the dollar sign will match text at the end of a string. For more complex regular expressions, we can group them using parentheses. Square brackets are used to select a particular set of items that appear within the square brackets. We can use the vertical bar or pipe symbol when we need to do an OR condition. Sometimes we want to take away the special meaning of meta characters so that we can literally match them in our text. So we can precede those characters with a backslash to take away their special meaning. Let's take a look at some of these examples of regular expressions. The first one is C dot T. Well, the dot means that we could have any character at that position. So, C dot T would match text strings such as the word cat as well as the word cut. In our second expression, we have C A R question mark T. The question mark means we're matching zero or one occurrence of some character in that position. In other words, the letter R is optional. So that expression would match words like cat as well as cart. In our third example, we've got AGG star HH star. The star symbol means that we are matching zero or more occurrences of the preceding element. So the preceding elements here are the letters G as well as H. In our fourth example, we have AG plus H plus. This is a little bit different than using the star symbol because with the plus symbol, we have to have one or more occurrences of the preceding symbol. In this case, the preceding is to the left for the letter G and for the letter H. In our fifth example, we have the hat or the caret symbol followed by the word once. So this will return any sentences that begin with the word once. Remember the dollar sign if it was placed after the word once, would match sentences that have the word once at the end of the string. In our next example, we have square brackets, and within them we have the letters C, H, and S. So we're matching any one of those with what follows outside of the square brackets, which is A, T. So that would match words like cat, hat, and sat. Finally, we have our last example, which is 123 vertical pipe 321. Remember, the vertical pipe symbol is the OR symbol. So here, what we're doing is matching either 123 or 321. In this video, we discussed regular expressions. In this video, I'll discuss how to use the grep command in Linux. The grep command is a line filtering command. We can take data from the command line or the contents of a file, feed it to grep, and it will show us only the lines that meet our criteria. For example, here at the command line, I'll type grep space, and in double quotes, I'm going to specify my criteria as being J Chavez. 
I'll close my double quotes. And the last parameter, I have to tell it where I want to look for that data. In this case, I'll put in slash etc slash password. When I press enter, it returns any lines from the etc password file that contain the search criteria J Chavez. It even highlights them in red. Next, I'll type in ifconfig space and the name of one of my network interfaces. What this will do is show me the configuration for that network interface. What I'd like to do is filter it so that I only see the lines that contain the IPv4 and IPv6 address. Now, what those lines have in common is they both have the text INET. So that's perfect. I can filter that using grep based on the text INET. So at the command line, what I'll type in is grep space in double quotes INET. I'll close the quote and put in a space. And after that, I'll put in my command ifconfig space and my interface. However, when I press enter, it gives me an error. It says there's no such file or directory. So it's treating the last parameter as a file or directory that I want to process looking for my criteria. IFconfig is not a file or a directory, it's a Linux command. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll first put in my command. In this case, IFconfig space, my interface name. And what I'll do is I will use my pipe symbol to pipe the result of the IFconfig command to grep, where I'll specify my criteria of INET. When I press enter, the result of the IFconfig command was fed to grep, and filter it out so we only see lines that have the text INET. There's some other interesting things that we can do with grep. Here I'll clear the screen and I'll type ls. I'm currently in the sales directory where I've got a couple of sales files. What I want to do is use the grep command and I want to look for occurrences of the word west beginning with a capital W. What I'll then do as my last parameter is use a wildcard, an asterisk. This means I would like to process every file in the current directory, look inside the contents for an occurrence of the word West, beginning with a capital W. When I press enter, I can see we have a number of files that are returned with those occurrences. Now, some of these output results are from the same file because there are multiple occurrences of my string within those files. I'll bring up that previous command with the up arrow key, and I might even then pipe the results, let's say, to the word count command, wc, where I want to pass a dash lowercase l to do a line count. It returns a number 9, which tells me that there are 9 occurrences of the word west in the files in the current directory. But I could get more specific to a file, of course, so this time I'll do grep space, and in double quotes I'll put in the word west, with the capital W, and I'll tell it I want to look for that only in the file called 2014 sales. Of course, now we can see the output is specific to that file. There are three occurrences of the word West. But if there were many more occurrences, we might actually pipe the results again to the WC command with dash L. In this case, it returns three. There are three occurrences of the word West, beginning with the capital W, in the 2014 sales file. In this video, we learned how to use grep. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use advanced grep parameters. The first thing we'll do is take a look at the help page for grep. At the command line, I'll type man space grep and I'll press enter to pull up the manual page. As I go down through this help page, I can see all of the various command line parameters that are available with the grep command. Here, specifically for example, I can see that if I use dash uppercase letter R, it will read all files under the current subdirectory recursively and follow any symbolic links. So I'll type Q to get out of that manual page and I'll clear the screen. I'll start by typing in grep space and in quotations I'm looking for the word west beginning with a capital W. My last parameter will be an asterisk. So I'm looking for the word west in files in the current directory. The current directory, according to my prompt, is the user files directory. Now, I don't really have any search results. All that grep returns is a list of subdirectories in user files. What I'm going to do, 
Let's bring up that previous command with the up arrow key. And at the end, I'll add a dash capital R. So from my current position in the file system hierarchy, that would be the user files directory in my case, I want to recursively look for the word West. And when I press enter, I have different output this time because it's showing me in the various subdirectories under user files that there are files that contain my search criteria. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to change directory into sales by typing cd space sales. At this point, I'm going to type grep and in double quotes, I'm going to look for the word west, but in all lowercase letters this time. My last parameter once again will be an asterisk. Now when I press enter, I don't get any search results because in the current directory, there are no files that contain the text string west in lowercase letters. I'm going to bring up that command again using my up arrow key on the keyboard and I'm going to modify the command so that it reads grep space dash lowercase i space west in quotation marks lowercase space asterisk. So what's different here is we've added the dash lowercase i which means a case insensitive comparison and if I press enter we can see in fact this time we do have results. It's returning the fact that we've got occurrences of west with a capital W even though our criteria has a lowercase w, but it doesn't matter because we told grep to use the dash lowercase i command line parameter. I'm going to type in grep dash lowercase i v space west in lowercase letters and finally asterisk. What's different in this command is that I've added the dash lowercase v. What this means is I want to return lines that do not include the word west. Now because there's a dash I here as well, it doesn't matter if it's west in uppercase, lowercase, or mixed case letters. When I press enter, if we look carefully at the output, it includes everything other than occurrences of the word west for files in the current sales directory. In this video, we learned how to use advanced grep parameters. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use grep with redirection. The grep command in Linux is a line filtering command, and sometimes we may want to take the resultant output from the grep command and either redirect it to a file or redirect it to another command on the command line with piping. Let's start by typing grep space dash i, I'm doing a case insensitive comparison of the word west for all files in the current directory, so space asterisk. Now, when I do that on the screen, it returns all occurrences of the search text west within files in the current directory. But instead of having that output on the screen, I'd like to store it in a file. So I'll bring up that previous command using my up arrow key, and I'll add to the end of it a greater than symbol. That's my output redirection symbol. And I want to create a file called westdata.txt in the current directory. So I'll type that in, and I'll press enter. So we don't get any output on the screen because it's been written to the file instead. So I'll use the cat command to display the contents of the westdata.txt file. And indeed, we can see our filtered output was stored in that file. In this example, I'll type grep space dash i, again for case insensitive search. I'm looking for the word north, so I'll put that in double quotes. And specifically, I'm looking for that within a file called 2014 sales. When I press enter, it filters out everything except for the lines that contain the word north. But I want to take it a step further. So I'll bring up that previous command with my up arrow key. What I want to do is I want to sort that output. First, I want to sort it by name. So at the end of the previous command, I will add a pipe symbol. And I'm then going to type in sort space dash k space 2. Dash k with the sort command means I want to sort by a specific column. In this case, column 2, which contains usernames. I'll press enter, and we can now see that the output is sorted by the username where it wasn't previously. I'm going to use the up arrow key to bring up that command again, but I'm going to change it slightly. In addition to the dash K, I want to have a dash lowercase r, which means I want to reverse sort, but not by column two, instead in this case by column four, which contains sales dollar amounts. 
Now when I press enter, we can see that the sales dollar amount has been sorted in descending order, where the largest value is first going all the way down to the smallest value. In the next command, I'm going to work with the ifconfig command. ifconfig shows me my interface configuration for all of my network interfaces, but here I'm specifying the name of one network interface. What I'd like to do is I'd like to filter it out so that I only get the IP version for address returned. I don't want anything else at all. So I'll bring up that ifconfig command again with my up arrow key, and I'll begin by piping it to grep where I want to make sure I only see lines that have inet. However, it also gives me the line that has inet6. So I'll bring up the previous command and I'll pipe it to grep a second time, but this time I'll use dash v because I want to exclude lines that have inet6. When I press enter, we're getting closer. We only have the line that has inet, but somehow I need to strip out everything but the IPv4 address itself. So I'll bring up the previous command. What I'm going to do is pipe this to the translate command, tr, where I'll use dash s to squeeze occurrences of spaces. So I can specify spaces by putting in quote, space, quote. And I want to replace that with some kind of common delimiter, which I'm putting in quotes here, the full colon. Now I have a nice easy way to extract only what I wish because everything is separated with a common delimiter, in this case, the full colon, but I could have used any symbol. Now I'll bring up that command again with the up arrow key and I'll pipe it once more to the cut command. In Linux, the cut command lets me cut out or extract very specific data. So I'll tell it here, I wanna cut out dash F space three, that would be field number three, that's the IP address, but I also have to tell it what my delimiter is. So I'll use dash lowercase d, and in quotes, I'll put in a full colon. Now we can see that we've ended up with the desired result. We've got only the IPv4 address. So we used the grep command numerous times in the pipeline, along with other commands like translate and cut. In this video, we learned how to use grep with redirection. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to locate content within a text file. The Linux grep command can be used to filter out data that results from another Linux command, or it can be used to filter out data that comes from a text file. Here we're going to work with text files. I'm going to type in grep space dash lowercase i. The lowercase i means a case insensitive comparison. And in quotations, my criteria will be caret, which is a hat symbol, followed by the word north, and I'll close my quote. So what I'm looking for are lines that begin with the word north, whether uppercase or lowercase. Now I have to tell the grep command where the data is that it should try to make that match. So as my last parameter, I'll type in the file name of 2014 sales. Then I'll press enter. We can see that it's returned only those lines that begin with the word north. I'll use my up arrow key to bring up that previous command and all I'm going to do is change the criteria. So instead of the caret symbol before the word north, I'll remove that. Instead, I'll have a dollar sign after the word north in my criteria. So now what I'm asking for are lines that end with the word north. When I press enter, I get no results because there are no lines within that file that meet that condition. We can verify this by typing cat space 2014 sales. And indeed, we can see that the rightmost column or the end of each line ends with a dollar amount and not text strings. While we're looking at the contents of this file, notice that user Dana Powell has a sales amount in the amount of 7,452. That appears to be the only number that consists of four digits. All of the other dollar amounts are larger. So we're going to use grep with a regular expression to make sure we only show sales amounts that are four figures. That's all we want returned. To do that, we'll start by typing in grep. Then I'll open my double quotes. What I'm going to type into the double quote is backslash dollar sign, four dots, dollar sign, close quote. 
Now let's start at the beginning of this criteria within the double quotes. The backslash symbol means we want to take away the special meaning of the character that follows. The dollar sign in regular expressions means we want to match something at the end of a line or the end of a string. Well, I don't want that dollar sign to be interpreted with that meaning. I just literally want to use it as a matching character. So that's why I've put in backslash dollar sign. In regular expressions, a dot matches a single character. So I've put in four dots because after a dollar sign, I'm looking for only four digits. Not two digits, not three, not five, but four. And I want that to be at the end of the line, which is why I've got another dollar sign within my regular expression. Now again, the last parameter is going to be the name of the file where this will be tested. So I'll put in 2014 sales and I'll press enter. Notice the only return result we get is for user Dana Powell, where the sales dollar amount is only four figures. Let's clear the screen and do another example or two. I'm going to type grep space dash i and in double quotes my criteria will consist of open square bracket w e close square bracket s t and then I'll close my quote. Now remember that with regular expressions whatever's in square brackets gets matched one at a time. So we're not looking for W and E at the same time. It's either a W or an E. Then, of course, the last parameter, I have to specify a file. So I'll put in 2014 sales. Notice it only returns west. Well, that's fine. That is working correctly. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to return either west or east. So I'll bring up that previous command with my up arrow key. And I'm going to modify my criteria within the double quotes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dot before the ST. So my criteria within double quotes now reads open square bracket WE close square bracket dot ST. The dot is a placeholder for a single character. Now when I press enter, we can see the resultant output has changed. It's returning lines that contain both west as well as east. In this video, we learned how to locate content within a text file.